We got a new camera. This is the Nikon F4. I was not expecting to get this camera. Found it online and instantly fell in love with it. It's a beast. I mean, it's a monster. Look at this freaking thing. It's so big and it's it's heavy. It's a freaking tank. It's kind, it's kind of an ugly monster. Like it's a big beast. So far, I've put one roll of film through it. Might be my new favorite film camera. I'm already pretty much in love with it. And so when I bought it, obviously very used. It's definitely had a bunch of rolls go through it. It's got a bunch of scuffs and dings. Few of the things are kind of falling apart on it, but I love it. That's half the reason why I love it. Um, and so I just barely finished my first roll of film through this camera. Um, and I just wanted to take you through the roll of film, kind of give you my first thoughts, my first initial impressions on what it's been like to shoot a roll of film through the Nikon F4. For most of these images, they were shot on a 50 millimeter F1 0.8 and that one is a manual focus lens. The reason I really love this camera is the fact that it is capable of shooting on autofocus lenses. Um, like this new one that I just barely picked up, this is the Nikon Nikkor 85mm f1.8. But this is an autofocus lens and this is going to be my portrait lens of choice from here on out. One of my favorite things that I love about this camera is that you can take this entire eyepiece completely off and then you get to have this cool top-down view. You know, you get to shoot it looking like this, like you're on a real vintage camera. Um, and so that's a lot of fun. You get to take the entire eyepiece off. I've really liked trying to shoot, you know, waist level and see how that goes. I think that's been really, really fun. And I love the versatility of this camera. Like it's, it's big and it's not one of the cameras that you're gonna take around and carry around everywhere with you but I love the way that it feels in my hands. I love the way that the autofocus works. Um, and so far I'm in love with the images. I love that it also has a vertical grip that just comes naturally with it. And so it's just a burly kind of monster camera. Um, and so far I've really enjoyed shooting with it. Um, so let's take a look at some of the images that I've shot so far on this camera. Um, I'll give you kind of my ideas of what I like about them, what I don't like about them. It was my first roll through the camera. I was still learning about how the camera operates, its kind of quirks, its bugs, the things that are a little bit odd and kind of strange about the camera. Because every vintage camera is going to have some kind of oddities with it. It's going to have a few things that you kind of have to learn how it works and how it takes an image. You kind of also have to notice how the light metering works. You know, this has something called matrix light metering. It was the first time that Nikon put out a camera with their brand new matrix light metering. Um, and so it's kind of a unique thing that you have to learn how that's going to function in the real world. You know, is it actually going to be with your style of shooting? Is it going to make it so you're constantly overexposing images or is it going to make it so you're constantly underexposing images? Or if you typically like a whole bunch of backlit scenes, is that going to mess with the matrix metering? Matrix metering is really advanced, I guess, for the 80s when this camera was put out. Um, and so far, I think it's working really well. Um, looking at these images, that I've shot so far on the F4. Um, I think a lot of them are really in good exposure. I think the camera nailed the exposure pretty well. Um, I know I was playing with the exposure compensation a little bit and I typically like to overexpose my film quite a bit a lot of the times. I really enjoy the look of blown out highlights and really kind of opened up blacks when I'm shooting on black and white. This thing's beautiful. This camera, this is, this is a dream. I can't wait to do a portrait session with this thing. I think doing a portrait session on this is going to be where this camera really comes into its own. Still learning a little bit about it, but let's take a look at this first roll of Kentamere Pan 400 that I sent through it. Um, and you guys can judge how good or how bad these images are. These are the first images that we shot on the Nikon F4. We're gonna take a look at these images and get a rough estimation on some of the mistakes that I'm possibly making, see how the camera is metering for exposure. Just kind of giving an all around feel for how this camera works before we take it out on a proper photo shoot. This is just some walk around stuff, going to the park with a friend. I also gave the camera to my little brother, let him shoot with it a little bit, just to get a whole feel for what the camera is doing, how it's operating. 
And at first glance, I'm in love with these images. I'm really happy with this one of this couple sitting in this gazebo. I really like the darkness that's happening around these edges while still maintaining a lot of detail and light where the actual subject matter is. I think this one gives a good feeling. I'm really pleased with that one. This portrait of Clay just, there's something not right about it. There's something, it might be too soft. Um, and for whatever reason, I thought I had my focus tack sharp on his eye when I shot this one, but it's very possible that I just had too slow of a shutter speed and that's why it looks like there's a little bit of that motion blur. Even though his hoodie looks like it is tack sharp, but his face isn't. So it's possible that maybe I did miss focus. I'm not totally sure, but Looking at this one, I'm getting excited for what potential portrait sessions we can do with this camera. Any picture of my dog I'm gonna be in love with. I don't love how he's not perfectly separated from the background. I think he kind of blends into it, but that's kind of the issue that you get when you're shooting with black and white a lot of the times is if you don't have a clear separation with your lights and your darks, if you're just relying on the bokeh to separate your subject matter out from your background, sometimes they can blur and mush together. It's just, it's just a problem with shooting black and white and being not a great photographer. This one I wish had come out really well. I had really high hopes for it. You can't see her very well, but there's a woman actually walking right between this pillar and this wall. I didn't get her dead in the center. I was hoping to get her shadow getting cast through this light beam as well. It's just, it's one of those images that it's almost there, but it's not, it's not good. This one I do actually really like. I'm very pleased with the lighting on my subject here with the background getting nicely blurred out. I think this one, this one works. It's pretty good. There's nothing spectacular about it, but I'm really happy with how the camera is metering for these kind of backlit scenes. I think that's looking really good. These shoes are kind of boring. There's nothing spectacular about that one. This one's one of my very favorite images and you can see where it kind of lends itself to my common style of really blowing out the highlights so that I can get a lot of detail in the shadow. And I love the way that this adds kind of this misty, moody atmosphere to the whole image. Like this was shot on pretty much a bright bluebird day, but with black and white film, you can blow out those highlights and it kind of gives it this misty, kind of ethereal looking effect. And just with uh, the leaves in the foreground, simple dead centered bench with my dog on the left, I'm really, really happy with that one. This one, there's nothing to say about it. It was missed focus. I thought there would be more exciting lines of light and shadow. That one, I mean, nothing. This one is another one where it's difficult to separate out the subject with black and white film because he kind of seems to blend into the leaves here in the foreground. So you don't get a bunch of separation. It's okay, it's better up here in his face. And I think the exposure's right. I think he's bright enough. And I think we actually still do have some detail in the clouds and trees back there, but they're not distracting. That's, that's fine, it's not bad. I really do like this one. I think this one came out really well. I like the darkness on either side of it where I was able to keep them with pretty balanced light because we had a lot of light coming through these trees. This is another backlit scene, but still able to get the latitude enough that we have our subject matter in pretty good light. I'm pleased with that one. I really do like that one. This one makes me really excited about shooting more with this camera because this is shot on the 50 millimeter uh, f1.8 pretty dark setting all we had was a single bulb up here there really wasn't much light coming in through this window and looking at how crisp it is for how low of light makes me excited for what possibilities there are with this camera pretty sure this one was a mistake i have no idea where it came from i don't remember shooting it it's my friend's house but you know i mean this is the same house but now there's actually a person there um, and I really like this one. I love the darkness over here contrasted with the bright white on this side of the image. Yeah, it sucks because I did miss focus here in the middle, but oh well, it's film. So like they'll probably just assume that it's an artistic take or something like that. 
Uh, this one was definitely shot by my brother because this is his dog. Um, and being able to hand the camera to someone who's never shot film before and know that they can nail exposure, that speaks, that speaks volumes. That makes me really excited. Oh, I love this one. I'm super excited with how this one came out. This one was shot through a pair of bars on the seventh floor of a parking garage overlooking this clock tower. And the detail that came out of this one, this is again on that 50 millimeter. No, 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 no. This one was on the 85 millimeter. Wow, I'm very pleased with that. I think that's very fun. I think maybe shooting some more architectural stuff with the 85 millimeter could be pretty fun. That one, my brother must have shot this one because it's his kid, but also, I don't know. That feels like it's motion blur. I don't think he had high enough shutter speed for shooting indoors with that. Uh, I don't know who shot this one, but I'm really, I really like it actually. I like the big black triangle right in the middle with just plain simple blank white blinds behind it. That's a, that's kind of art. I like that. This is just a standard dog photo, but again, it's nice to see that the exposure metering on the camera is working really well. Yeah, I love the way these are exposing. They're really keeping the subject, like the actual center weighted subjects, really well lit and while letting that background just fall away into darkness and nothing, that's great. Yeah, we are very, very happy. This is again, another one that my brother had shot. And so it's really awesome to see how well this camera performs in someone's hands that has never really shot film, that doesn't know what you need to do with your exposure or anything, and know that you're able to still produce some really good images. Oh yeah, see, we're loving this. We're loving loving the way that this light is all properly balanced with the darks in the background and a really bright centered subject matter. I love that one. I really like that. I'm impressed with this as well. I like how even on a backlit scene, where we're getting a lot of light from this window, our subject right in the middle is actually still really well exposed. It's not falling completely into shadow where a lot of light meters will balance too hard for your highlights and they'll darken too much here. Wow, I'm really pleased with that. I think that one's a really good one. I love this one of my niece right here. I love the light on her hair where everything else is in shadow. You know, kind of standard Christmas time. Oh, yes, 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 yes. We're in love with this. Okay, man. Okay, Kentimir Pan 400. I've been ragging on it and saying that it's kind of like a garbage, low class film because it's super cheap. But man, this is changing my, this is changing me. I really like this. I think this is looking really good. I'm super pleased with the shallow depth of field, the amount of detail that it's stayed in this. Wow, I'm in love with that 85 millimeter. I cannot wait to do some more portraits with that. I do love the kind of feel of this one. I like the the darkness of the grass up front and then she's positioned right between these two lines of shadow with the trees. I like that a lot. I think this one's that one's got a feel to it. This one's garbage. Like I don't know what on earth I was shooting. I don't know what it was supposed to be, but there's no detail in the sky, which is fine if that's what you're going for, but like there's also nothing to look at in the foreground. That's just garbage. This is one of those stupid film photos that like it's kind of freaking awesome because it's not good you know this is one of the ones where you can say oh yeah it was supposed to like this is this is my artistic take on you know i blurred it out on purpose no it's just me missing focus but for some reason i'd still like it i think it's great this one of this stupid tree i thought this one was going to be so good i had such high hopes i thought this shadow was going to be nice and crisp and it would have this perfect line of the tree and the shadow and the lake in the background with this couple walking but it just it just doesn't do it for me. I don't, I don't like it. I'm not happy with it. I am pleased with this one. I think it's fine. There's nothing particularly great to say about it. Um, just a clean image. That one, I really love how well this camera is performing in backlit situations because I do shoot a lot of backlit subjects and being able to maintain the exposure here and have enough detail in the shadows while not completely ruining the highlights. They're pretty blown, but they're not, there's still a little bit of detail there. That one, this one I do, I like this. I like this one a lot. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Man, you can even see me in the reflection of her glasses. Wow. 
yeah, we are very pleased. I love the way this whole background is just melting away to nothing. This one feels so good. I really love the contrast of blacks and darks with her face ringed with this kind of lighter part of her jacket. And so you have this really nice framing of black there, black up top, everything bright that you want to be looking at here. I'm not exactly sure where my focus went. I think I got right here, maybe on the top of her glass, because this one's definitely out of focus on the left, but wow, we are very happy with that one. Oh, I am in love with this. I think this is one of the best photos that came out of the roll. This could be the best photo that came out of the roll. This is actually shooting through two panes of glass. And so we're on a corner here where I'm shooting through this glass. And this is actually a reflection in the other pane of glass that goes for it's sorry complicated but man i'm really happy with that i can't believe that the nikon was able to grab focus through all of that messy stuff in front of it and still nail that god i love that one Oh, I mean, it's always, I'm always going to be happy with it when it's my dog. And so that one's, that's great. I really like that. I think that one's well balanced. This one, oh, I had such high hopes for this one. I thought this was going to be such a good image, but in all honesty, like it's kind of garbage. I, I do shoot a lot of dumpsters. Dumpsters are fun. But there's this guy right in this patch of sunlight, right in the very middle. And I thought he was perfectly exposed. I thought it was going to be like this darkness that really brought your whole eye into the very center of it. And there'd be something exciting to look at. But there's just not enough detail of him about what's going on. So like you don't really know where to look and it doesn't it doesn't give me any feelings it doesn't give me any like oh i like that you know like i don't i don't care it's it's fine it's nothing the nikon f4 we are very very pleased with it we're really really happy with how the images have come out i am very very excited about this camera i think it's going to be incredible to shoot with i can't wait to shoot some portraits with it honestly i have no complaints i think this might be my new favorite film camera at least for the time being until I find something else that I want to like more than I like this one. Oh, see, we're so, so, so happy with that one. Very, very pleased with these images. Uh, can't wait to shoot a little bit more on the F4. I'm gonna do a proper review of the camera here in the next little bit where I go through the things that I really do like about it, the things that I don't like about it, and give you kind of my actual taste on how to use this camera in maybe some more professional kind of shootings. I've got a mural artist that I'm gonna go hopefully do a portrait of here pretty soon. And so maybe we'll take some really bright, colorful film out and photograph that, see how that looks. I mean, step away from my standard black and white stuff and go play with colors for a little bit. Should be a lot of fun. We'll see you.